Hey there. Hey there, all you cool cats and kittens. <laughs> Welcome to Wednesday's live lunch chat. Uh, first off, let me apologize that this is not taking place over where there was a scheduled live lunch chat. Um, it's just every day is a learning venture in this Facebook world, and this girl is still learning. Facebook, for some reason, has totally different protocols for uh, desktop computers versus mobile devices. And apparently you can schedule a live video on your desktop, but then you cannot go live for that video on your mobile device. So, super annoying. Um, of course, I didn't know that when I scheduled it. I was like, cool, I can schedule a live. It'll give them a countdown. This is great. And then I got here at the shop and I only have my phone with me because I don't carry my laptop back and forth right now during the COVID. And then I found out I can't actually go live in the live I scheduled. So I had to delete it uh, so that it didn't like start on its own back at home and scare the crap out of my whole family. And because um, it did say, um, anyways, sorry for the confusion. Um, maybe I'll get it figured out by the next video. Don't count on it. Um, <laughs> So anyway, um, I think what I would like to do is actually try out some third party go live um, applications. They cost some serious money though, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna go down that route. We'll see, we'll see, anything's possible, right? I mean, if we're gonna be stuck for maybe another whole month with um, you know, this conditions of uh, social distancing and staying home, then maybe it'll be worth it for a little while for how much we're going live. So, hi everybody who has joined in. CC, what does that mean, Heidi? She says you're CC. Hi, Jenny, Jan, Chris from LA, Sarah from Ben. It's good to see everybody. Uh, so sorry for uh, making you worry on Monday when I didn't show up for any live video. Honestly, you guys, I kind of thought, <laughs> hi Sandy, I kind of thought nobody would notice. Um, <laughs> so I got started doing this tubular bind off on my shifty sweater. And if you haven't turned, uh, or sorry, I just read a word, done a tubular bind off yet. Um, basically what you do is you work a whole round of knit one, slip one with yarn and back, and then you work a whole round of purl one, slip one with yarn in front or vice versa. And, um, then you split all of your stitches. You slip them all onto a different needle, all the knits on one needle, all the pearls on another needle. So you have to one at a time, slip, 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 slip. Then you Kitchener all of those together. That's right, you graft them. And it makes a beautiful tubular bind off, which is super, super stretchy and lovely. But I don't think I fully thought through what I was getting myself into when I embarked on that. So I started doing that at about 1030 um, with the first row of knit slip. And when I first got up, the first message was from my rep, Sandy, who's watching this. And she was like, texted me and she said, are you okay? <laughs> about 12, 15, maybe. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> and I was still doing that damn tubular bind off. Um, and not only that, I was in my pajamas and I was like, there was no video happening. I, first of all, I, I felt like I couldn't set any of it down. Once I had begun, it was, I was going to be in my spot without moving till that sucker was finished. So not only was it an entire sweater's worth of, of kitchenering for the tubular bind off, it's fingering weight yarn. I think it was 300 some stitches. And um, so on size two needles, but let's look at it. Yeah, see if you guys can, get the uh, intricacies of that. So here it is. Nice, stretchy. Look at all that stretch. Isn't that cool? Um, this is the front of it, actually. So it's totally, totally worth it. Hey, Nydia. <laughs> Jenny says this is the most adult interaction she's had all day. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jen. <laughs> So here's the sweater that I um, that caused me to miss Monday's video because I was doing that bind off. This is my shifty and it's really got quite a um, starry night vibe going on because I, I grabbed about six skeins of different fingering oddballs that I had and it turned out that three of them were blue purple. So I decided they would just be consistently the background colors and the brighter ones would be the contrast colors. 
Um, so it's nice and cropped. I've uh, tried it on. It fits me almost just exactly at my natural waist. I'm very short waisted. Um, and I'm doing both of the sleeves um, nearly simultaneously right now because um, I am getting low on some of the background yarns. So basically I'll do one whole motif, which is 12 rounds, and then I'll come over and I'll do it on the, um, the next sleeve and then the next 12 rounds. So they're kind of like mm, 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 with the sleeves, uh, but I'm hoping that this will be done soon. Um, I'm super excited for it. This one is called Sue's Fault because Sue made me do it. Um, just like anything, if you need to blame somebody for your knitting, for excessive knitting, hold one second. Sorry, dropped my knitting. Uh, just blame Sue, it's okay. She is a great source of inspiration and she made the most beautiful shifty just grabbing all of her fingering weight leftovers, dumping them into like a you know, semi-color coordinated pile, and then she knits like lightning. Uh, she probably gives Jill a run for her money. She's that fast. And she came in wearing it, and it was so beautiful. I couldn't resist doing that myself. So um, that's my Sue's Fault sweater, AKA Starry Night, and I'm hoping to finish that up soon. Um, and that is why I missed Monday's chat, because I was grafting that gigantic tubular bind off on the bottom. So, sorry, quick beverage break. Today's flavor is berry. I hope this doesn't make me belch. I don't really ever drink carbonated beverages, and so then when I have these LaCroix, I am just burpy. We'll just call them burpy. Um, so, want to see what else I've been up to? You guys would laugh if you saw the um, mess all around me. I've got a bag. I have three boxes here, and then the counter is right here, and it's covered in stuff because I just had all the stuff I wanted to show you, and so I just like kept throwing it all within my you know arm's reach, basically. So, let me show you what else I did since the last time we talked. Ta-da! Finished socks. Finished man socks, and look, they match. They are dang near identical. I am so tickled. Um, hi, Marie. Uh, these these are for Jason, and he loves, loves, loves hand knitted socks. He gets it. He is absolutely sock worthy. His feet are not monstrously big. He wears like an 11, 10 and a half, 11. Um, and I have his whole spot sock specs down committed to memory so I know you know what to cast on and how far to go etc um he kind of got inundated with socks for Christmas you know which is not a bad thing he needed socks but now he has so many that um I think these are just gonna stay in like the rainy day fund for when some of the commercial socks blow out because they will um and so he'll have a nice pair of hand knitted socks on backup and I also finished these stump towns for Mallory. So these are that gorgeous stump town sock pattern. Oops, let's get that split. There we go. Stump town sock pattern that has that fun flying geese motif. This is by Shannon Squire. And Mallory picked this sock yarn out of my stash. It's some koi goo I bought ages and ages and ages ago. And um, cause she also gets hand knitted socks. Um, and so she really especially likes wearing them in the winter in snow and in, um, <laughs> Leslie says humans burp. Thank you, Leslie. Um, you guys, Leslie was the other cherry sweetheart when I was talking about cherry sweethearts. If anybody heard that, um, yeah, that was her. So let's see here. Um, and then this is something else I did because I finally felt like I was clearing up some stuff on my, um, shoulders <laughs> on my knitting psyche. I was clearing up some whips, so I allowed myself to swatch for this. I wish you could just reach right through and feel it right now because this is cashmere. This is, uh, what's the cashmere that's right there, right over my shoulder. See that? That's the Blue Sky Eco Cashmere and it's 50% virgin cashmere and 50% recycled cashmere. And I'm gonna knit um, Coco Knits Sarah, which is a, a pretty new Coco Knits pattern that they released, and it's kind of like a cropped jacket, a little bit slouchy oversized, and it's all done in this half fisherman's rib, which is uh, not brioche, but like knit one below. So um, this swatch, 
Ah, it feels amazing. So I cannot wait to get started on that. Uh, swatching was successful. We are A-OK -okay to go. So I had started this in anticipation of finishing my socks. This is a um, this is an Arne and Carlos uh, Regia um, colorway. And then I also started another pair. I see I have an upstairs pair and a downstairs pair. I don't know if anybody else has like <laughs> those <laughs> shoes at home, but you know, like if you get upstairs and you forgot some knitting, you gotta have something to work on. So there's the pair that lives upstairs to pick up and do a few rows. And there's the pair that lives downstairs to pick up and do a few rows. And then there's the pair that lives in my purse. And that's gonna be this. Doesn't this seem like the perfect COVID yarn? I think so. This is that Vesper sock yarn that I showed you guys. Um, um, several weeks ago, I ordered it from my friend Anne up at Yarn Folk in Ellensburg. So if you wanna get your hands on some of this glorious sock yarn, this will do stripes. Um, then call Anne or go to her website, Yarn Folk, and you can get some too. So this is gonna be my purse pair of socks. <laughs> yeah, what's the big deal? Don't you judge me. So that is, um, let's see, that's three of the things I had piled up around here. Um, next up is, as promised, um, my corn skein that I got from Lucinda up at Montreal in Canada. So this was so much fun. I, um, I, first of all, I got to experience what you guys get to experience when you open up these packages, totally not knowing what it is that you're going to be getting. And I just love, none of this is stuff I would have picked out for myself at all. And it's beautiful. I cannot wait to come up with something to do with it. So this is like, a, this is like a cloud. It, I think it's actually called Merino cloud. <laughs> Extra fine Merino, 80%, 20% cashmere, and it's art yarn. So it's hand dyed and it is absolutely gorgeous. It just feels amazing feels like a dream and a little uh, Montrico stitch marker and then this is um, spin cycle which I'm sure most of you are familiar with we don't have it here but um, it's it's been so popular in the last couple of years this is um, a super they're super wash sport and uh, oh sorry worsted and this is Julie Oseline nurtured which is uh, Rambouillet Targi and Merino blend in kind of a bluey gray heathered and um, she said that she thought these would these two would work great for a pattern together, and I couldn't agree more. So um, this is her custom colorway of the spin cycle. So this is a colorway that's only up at Montreco, and it's called Heliotrope. So anyways, thank you, Lucinda. I just wanted to share everybody what my treat was. Um, so there's, there's a group of shop owners on Facebook, and um, in this group is where Lucinda first shared this idea for the corn skeins, and that told us all, everybody should do this, it's really fun, run with it. So now what we did as shop owners is we compiled a list of anyone who was interested and um, shuffled them all up, and we're each sending each other a corn skein. So all these shop owners who've been filling these corn skeins um, for the last several weeks and thinking so much about all the other people, we're all gonna get one from a fellow shop owner. So I just think it's really beautiful. Um, the name of the colorful colors, uh, the rainbow sock yarn, Peggy, is that what you were talking about? Um, it's so I know it's like a lag because I see comments probably a good 30 seconds after you guys see them. Uh, but Peggy was asking what the name of the colorful color. I, I don't know if you meant the sock yarn, uh, the rainbow sock yarn, or the ones that I just showed up from my corn scheme. So if you send in, an, I'll look for your response here um, in the comments. Um, yeah, so anyways, um, while we're talking about sock yarn, um, we have had a couple of new sock yarns arrive. Maybe I'll show you the boxes next. Do you guys wanna see what's in the boxes? Um, yeah, let's do that. Okay, flip her around. Alrighty, over here we have gorgeous March hair braids from um, Wonderland Yarns. I'm gonna just like lay them on the floor. It might be a little dark, but they're so pretty. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. There we go. Let's see. Dump this one out. So we make um, Melinda kits for my hat, Melinda. Um, in these yarns and um, 
we, they've been so popular. Like we've been giving them away in the corn skeins and then people also have been ordering more because they thought they were so fun. So we got a bunch of um, a bunch of these in that we didn't have previously. So these are not quite on the website yet. I need to take some pictures of them and then they'll be up. But yay, more March hair kits, uh, gradient kits. Then we got a big, beautiful box of Malabrigo. We've got Rios. Uh, we've got Washed, we've got Rasta, um, all kinds of fun stuff. That one is up on the website, um, pretty sure. And then look at this red. This is a brand new color of Soft Yak. I feel like I need to take that out of the bag. Yeah, one sec. I'm going to make you all sick here with this camera moving around. There, it's much better out of the bag. Look at that color. Oh, man. So this is the cotton and yak blend from Rowan. And this was a new color for this season, but it came in kind of late for some reason. The other one's already arrived. So that came. And then something we weren't even sure was going to come arrived, finally. This is the um, cotton cocktail color. So this is a cotton sock yarn for those of you that can't do wool it's um where can i get the fiber breakdown here it's like a cotton poly so it's like a stretchy cotton poly blend and it self patterns which is so fun um i know people who can't do wool they're oftentimes kind of sad because um the yarn you know that is available isn't like the fun self patterning stuff so we have a whole bunch of colors those are all on the website that's called cotton cocktail and then also we have this gorgeous stuff right here which is six ply so if you're not familiar um over in europe they tend to call like the typical sock weight uh four ply that's like a fingering and then the six ply is a little bit more heavier and this is 150 gram um, skein so you can still do a whole uh, pair of socks with one ball and you can do a great mid-weight sock so we've got a pattern for a mid-weight sock on two circulars and um, let's see the yardage on this is like 410 I want to say yeah 410 yards also self-patterning there's uh, five colors here's another color that I just grabbed really quick to show you guys so really fun um, lots of fun good stuff there I'm gonna bring it back Stop making you sick with bouncing around. Is that gonna work? Okay. Hey, so yeah, boxes and presents and yarn and it's just like Christmas. And it's gonna get even better because yesterday I placed a nice Tosh order for Tosh Merino Light and uh, 20 colors of Tosh Merino Light. And then, um, oh yeah, and some Manos. So we'll get restocked on our Manos, uh, Manos de Uruguay Fino and Milo and the Manos mini sets, which have also been really popular. So yeah, Jill, I would say that it is kind of similar to fix Fixation, which is an old cotton sock yarn we had, but it's not quite as heavy. It's like a fingering weight. Um, what else was I gonna, oh. So I wanted to tell you guys about this really cool thing Marie's doing um, that I think is kind of special in this weird time of uncertainty we're all living in right now. And I have, huge plans to participate in this. I just haven't done it yet. Um, but God knows I've got the stash for it. So she's created this really cute ongoing pattern called Knit Your Own Sunshine. And I'm going to show you what the front of that looks like. This is one of them here. Knit Your Own Sunshine. And it's this cute little bunting. And so every couple, every week or two weeks, she releases a couple more um, bunting pattern. So here's like a stripey guy and um, here's like a superhero. And so that you can use up your DK to light worsted weight scraps. I mean, even really tiny scraps. Make these cute little triangular flags, string them up and create some sunshine around your house. Um, I totally plan to hang these on my front porch, you know, in a, um, in a bunting pattern because I just think that um, I don't know. I think it gives people something fun to talk about when they walk by. Everybody's out doing a lot of walking lately because we're all stuck in our houses and you know, people will look at them and say, oh, isn't that cute or stupid or I don't even care. If it gives them something to talk about, hey, I'm all for it. Um, 
Anyway, I just think it's really sweet. You can find that on Ravelry. She's doing that for free. So, um, and she's releasing new a couple new patterns every couple weeks. So it's very, very sweet. It's on Ravelry and it's called Knit Your Own Sunshine. Um, so thank you, Marie. That's very kind. I got this um, skein of Shibui uh, Merino Worsted in our skein swap at Christmas time. And that's gonna be one of my first um, buntings right here. Um, or at least yarns incorporated in buntings because I think that that would be perfect. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, what else is there to talk about? God, I've made such a mess. Um, oh, I do have one last thing and then I'll wrap it up so that I don't keep you guys too long, but I have a contest. All right. Um, last week I wore that blue sweater. It was cropped. It had a lacy... Um, part here on the sleeve and then lace down the back and we have a contest now for you guys to win five skeins of that yarn so this is Barocco Cambria and this is an alpaca linen blend so DK weight so five skeins of that right there and then the Barocco Cambria pattern booklet so that has these six patterns in it and five skeins can do, I think, most of these guys. Um, so that's going to be our contest. Now, here's what you need to do in order to be entered to win. I need you to make a comment on this video saying that you think it'd be really cool to win this prize. And then if you want, you can share that with somebody else and ask that, you know, invite them to watch the video and comment for themselves that they'd like to win this prize as well. Today's Wednesday at noon. So basically what I'll do is I'll leave the comments open on this video until just before our Friday video at noon. And then I'll take all the people who've commented they'd like to win the prize from this video, the comments on this video. I'll put those in the uh, prize generator and we'll pick somebody and then we'll send it to them. So if you, uh, if you think you wanna win five skeins of Barocco Cambria and the Barocco Cambria booklet, which has six patterns in it, Comment, tell me that you want to win, and tag a friend who th you think might want to win that as well. So, Robin says that's her new favorite color. Awesome! Then it's perfect! <laughs> um, this is courtesy of Barocco, by the way. I just wanted to say that they sent me this as a prize to give out to my customers. Once again, hitting it out of the park, supporting their, um, their customers, who are us, the local yarn shops. So... Um, thank you everybody for catching us um, with this noon live right here. I hope you all are doing well. I hope you all are staying safe, staying home, getting some knitting done. And if you are trying to teach your kids and work from home and do all that, or if you're a frontline worker, then um, I'm sending all of my thoughts of strength and love to you. Hang in there. It can't go on forever, right? All right. I'll see you guys next Friday. Bye.